These two pulled off one of the biggest scams of the pandemic in 2020 when they used a series of addresses, bank accounts and businesses to take nearly £10 million whilst others were stuck at home struggling to make ends meet. I started looking into their story last week and I couldn't believe what I found. This guy is Artem Tertian. He's 38, he's from Russia and part of a huge international crime network. During the pandemic, he made millions of pounds alongside his Lithuanian friend, Davis Gruciatsky. While a lot of people in the UK were losing their jobs, losing money, and just worried about how they were gonna make ends meet, these two were absolutely rolling in it. Back in 2016 and 2017, Artem and Davis set up loads of companies registered to different addresses all over London. They used these companies to create legitimate business bank accounts at many high street banks across the capital. And each month they would hand in stacks of cash to each of these bank accounts. We're talking tens of thousands of pounds at a time. Over the weeks and months, these shell companies started to interact with each other. Money would transfer from one to the other in a complex web of transactions, basically mimicking what legitimate businesses do to make it seem that they were legit carrying out proper work when the actual reality is they were just being used to launder money. So after the money would zip back and forth and around all these business accounts and businesses that they'd set up, the money would then transfer into accounts they would have in places like Germany, the Czech Republic, United Arab Emirates, Hong Kong and Singapore. After the money left the UK, that was it it was virtually impossible to trace and get it back here to the UK. So this is where it gets interesting because of course, then in 2020, something big happened, didn't it? The pandemic, of course. COVID cases were spreading all across the country, leading to huge global lockdowns, businesses being forced to shut, and people really struggling to make ends meet. Look, you don't need me to tell you what it was like. I'm sure you've got a story yourself. The government here needed to act fast. So what they did is they set up the furlough scheme they also offered businesses the bounce back loan scheme so I'm taking four further steps today to make that happen bounce back loans have given over a million small businesses a 38 billion pound boost to survive this pandemic the bounce back loan scheme was basically the UK government handing out loads of cash to struggling businesses to stay afloat that they could then pay back when the economy got back up and running again. Each business could get up to £50,000 per business through a loan that could then help them get back on their feet that they could pay back at pretty decent interest rates over the next few years. And this is where Artem and David had a brilliant idea. They used all the fake companies that they'd already set up to get a slice of the pie. The thing is, like I've said, they had these businesses up and running for years, so getting the cash wasn't a problem for them at all. In fact, in total, they successfully applied for a massive £10 million in the loans, including more than £3 million from one bank alone. By the way, if you are enjoying this video, please hit the like button and also please do subscribe to the channel as well. I'm here to bring you cool stories that you should be hearing more of about in the news but it's not on the mainstream agenda so if that's your sort of thing definitely hit the subscribe button help me out and I will offer you some really interesting stories every single week. Anyway back to it when I was learning about all of this I started to ask myself how? How were they able to get away with it with so much cash? But the reality is there have been some serious and obvious flaws in the government loan scheme that were there to be taken advantage of by people who acted fast. For example, something as basic as a check to see if a company had applied for more than one bounce back loan wasn't in place until June 2020, a couple of months after the scheme had already started. So you got loads of these companies applying not just for one, but various bounce back loans and being told they could have it. By the time that that check had come in though in June 60% of the cash on offer had already been paid out to businesses including to Artem and his web of shell companies. Another of the checks that wasn't in place was to see how long these businesses applying for the loans had been operating for. In early March for example registrations were running at about 15,000 new businesses every single week. After lockdown hit 
that figure halved to just seven and a half thousand a week. Then Chancellor Rishi Sunak made his announcement on the 27th of April. Registrations in the immediate aftermath to that rose to a record 21,660 new businesses by the end of June. Not all of them are fake, of course, but it does ask the question, how many people were registering businesses after they heard about the bounce back loan just so they could get that money? Other checks that weren't in place when the scheme first started were things like seeing where the businesses were actually registered to because there have been reports of people registering multiple businesses at the same address. The lack of action actually to put these checks in place right at the start has then been called inadequate by the National Audit Office. They're the guys that basically check how the government spends its money. And as I was reading more and more into this, the more I realized you didn't need to be like, Artem and part of a criminal international gang and a mastermind to have scammed the banks and the government into getting all this cash because there are so many examples of people also trying it on like Asif Hussain and Ibrahim Shafiq who set up companies a month after the bounce back loan was announced and received £145,000. Then there's also Declan Fauston who took around £40,000 but the most worrying thing is what happened to Mark Telling. Mark supposed supposedly took a loan out of £50,000, but actually he had no idea about this because it was people taking the loan out using his address and his name and getting away with that money and he has no idea who it was. The thing is, I'm mentioning people like Asif, Ibraz and Declan here, but they have now been caught. There are others out there who still haven't been caught, who've been taking loads of cash and getting away with it. It's a huge con and actually a successful one as well that's meant that loads of cash has gone on missing. The government has worked out that about five billion pounds is going to be lost to this scam that they're not going to be able to get back. They've just written it off and it's not a pretty look. So much so that the minister in charge for looking after fraud resigned from the government, a guy called Ted Agnew. That the current state of affairs is not acceptable. Given that I'm the Minister for Counter Fraud, it feels somewhat dishonest to stay on in that role if I'm incapable of doing it properly, let alone defending the, the, our track record. Total fraud loss across government is estimated at 29 billion a year. Of course, not all can be stopped. But a combination of arrogance, indolence and ignorance freezes the government. The business department had a look at this and said the government support schemes have provided a lifeline to millions of businesses across the UK, helping them survive the pandemic and protecting millions of jobs. They say we are continuing to crack down on COVID-19 fraud and will not tolerate those that seek to defraud the British taxpayer. What else is happening is that the Chancellor Rishi Sunak, the man who brought this scheme in, has made an extra hundred million pounds available for officials to hire 1,000 investigators to try and track down this missing cash. Some people that won't be tracked down though are our old friends Artem and Davis who are having a brilliant time with all that money. They've actually now been found and are in jail for 33 years between them. But check this out. Only £17,000 of the money they stole has been recovered so far. The rest, somewhere out there, in a different country, probably waiting for them when they get out. Thanks so much for watching this video. Hope you've learned something. Hope you found it interesting. Please do hit subscribe. Something else you can do to really help me is to share this with two people you think would find it interesting. That will help my channel grow. And also do check out some of the other content on the channel as well. Looking forward to seeing you all soon.